All right, what's going on? So let's take a look at a linear programming problem, and we're going to use Excel to solve it. So the problem, it says it takes 11 units of carbohydrates and 5 units of protein to satisfy Rob's weekly requirements. The meat contains 2 units of carbohydrates and 2 units of protein per pound. The cheese contains 3 units of carbohydrates and 1 unit of protein per pound. The meat costs three ten per pound and the cheese costs eleven thirty per pound. How many pounds of each are needed to fulfill the minimum requirements at minimum cost? What is Rob's minimum cost? All right, so I went ahead and set up the equations, and I kind of filled out the sheet a little bit to save some time. So what we want to do is minimize the cost, okay? So X, okay, so the meat cost. 310 per pound and the cheese costs 430 per pound. Okay, so how many pounds of each? Well, X is going to represent the pounds of meat and Y is going to represent the pounds of cheese. And so to minimize the cost, well, the cost is going to be $3.10 times the number of pounds plus four dollars and thirty cents which is the cost of cheese times the number of pounds all right so what we do here is we th this right here is we where we set up our uh, function that we're going to minimize or maximize all right so in here we're going to put the coefficients of x and y all right so here we'll put the 3.1 and then here we'll put the 4.3. All right. Now, this cell here, we're going to leave it blank. And I'm going to go ahead and fill that yellow. And then this cell here, that's going to be our minimum cost. Okay. So we're not going to leave it blank. It's going to have a formula in it. So let's just go ahead and we'll just make it a a different color. Let's see if I can find something else. How about maybe that color? All right, so th this cell here, we're going to have a formula. So what we want to do is this cell and this cell, this right here is where our solution is going to be. So when we run the, the solver in Excel to solve this, it's going to be throwing numbers in here. And what, what's going to happen is when it's throwing numbers in here, well, we need to calculate this function here. So like if we put, say like X is 1 and say this is 2, then we'll have 3.1 times 1 plus 4.3 times 2, and I'll need to know what that is. Well, that's where this comes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter a formula into here that will do that. So we're going to enter in the sum product formula. Okay. So what I want it to do is I want it to multiply this times this. See, this times this, and then add this times this. Okay. See, the 4.3 times y. So what I do is I select the coefficients, that's the 3.1 and the 4.3, and then I select what's going to be put in for X and Y, the X and the Y. And see what this does is it's going to, it's going to do B18 times B19, see, B18 times B19, and then plus and then C18 times C19. See, C18 times C19, and it's a, is it. It multiplies, and then it sums it up. Okay? All right, so let's close that and hit Enter. And, of course, right now it'll be a zero. Okay, so, so that's my function that I want to 
maximize or minimize. Now, what we want to do is we need to put our constraints in. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put the coefficient of x, okay? So that's going to be the 2, and then the coefficient of y, which is 3, and then we want it greater than or equal to, so greater than or equal to. Now th this greater than or equal to is not going to do anything. It's just there, so I'll know that it's greater than or equal to. It's not going to play into solver it. You know, we'll put it in solver, but not based on this cell. It's just more cosmetic, I guess you could say. And then that needs to be greater than or equal to 11. Okay. And then we'll go to the second constraint. So I've got 2x plus 1y, and that's greater than or equal to, and that needs to be greater than or equal to 5. And then I've got x is greater than or equal to 0. So see, in the x column, I'm going to put a 1. In the y column, well, see, there's no y here. So I can either put a 0 or just leave it blank. So I'll just leave it blank. And that's got to be greater than or equal to 0. And then for the y, well, there's no x. So I can put a 0 or leave it blank. And then in the y column, see I've got a coefficient of 1 there. I'll put the 1, and that has to be greater than or equal to 0. All right. So when I run solver, it's got to run through uh, doing the calculations here, like I explained earlier, for this function here. And then for the constraints, it has to do the same thing. It's got to calculate these based on this. See, I've got to do 2 times the x value plus 3 times this y value. And it's going to and what's going to happen is going to make sure that it's greater than or equal to 11. And then the same thing here, it's got to do 2 times x 1 times y and make sure that's greater than or equal to 0. Okay? And then the same thing here, 1 times x, that has to be greater than 0. And 1 times y, that has to be greater than 0. Well, greater than or equal to. So that's what this is for. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the constraints. But when I do the 2 times x plus the 3 times y, I'm going to put that value here. Okay, and this right here is what I'm going to use for my solver. All right, so I'll use the sum product formula again. All right, so what do I have to do? I have to do this because I've got to do 2 times x plus 3 times y. So I highlight this and then the comma, and then I'm going to select this and close my parentheses. So see it's going to be do B22, which is this, times B19 plus C22 times C19. And then it's going to add it up. All right. So I'm going to hit enter, but I'm going to go back to the formula. All right. So instead of typing this again, See what I see here. I've got the B B twenty two to C twenty two, and then the B nineteen to C nineteen. So it's going to take this times this plus this times this. Well, then I need the B twenty three. This times this plus this times this. Okay. Well, instead of typing that formula all over again, I can come in here, and I can put dollar signs. And what, what will happen is when I, I can copy this down, okay? You see the formula here? It's got the dollar signs. So when I copy this down, what it's doing is, you see how this is B22 to C22? Now, look at this. This is B23 to C23, but this still stays at B19 to C19, and that does it all the way down. So I don't have to type it in every time. I can just copy it down. Well, now I need the right-hand side of this. Well, that's these numbers. So all I have to do is hit equals, 
select this cell and hit enter. And then I can take this and copy it down and it'll copy, it'll copy the rest of them. Okay. All right. So now we have our uh, spreadsheet ready to go. So now we can use solver. Solver, I've got it over here on the data, on the data tab. But if you don't have the solver showing up, you can just go to File and Options and go down here to Add-ins. Let's see if that's going to... Okay, there it is. And see where it says Manage Excel Add-ins? Hit Go and just make sure that's checked. And when it's checked, just hit OK and it'll install it. Okay. All right. And then it'll show up here on the Data tab. All right, so let's go ahead and, and click the solver. Let's kind of, let's move it over here. <clears throat> All right, so, well, I had already done this. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and delete all this and start over. Usually when it comes up, it'll come up as max. All right, so obviously in this problem, we want to minimize the cost. So I want to hit check minimum. Now set the objective. The objective is, is this cell here, C. Okay, I need to minimize that. All right, and then I want to minimize it by changing variable cells. Well, here's my variable cells. Okay. See, this is the X, Y. These are the values I was explaining to you earlier that are going to change. All right. So I'm going to highlight these and there's that. All right. Now I need to add my constraints. So to add my constraints, well, I've got the a cell reference here. Now I'm going to, I'm going to show you something here. See, I need the left side. See, that's where it's calculated to be greater than or equal to the right side. And then I can hit add, and then I could go and I can add the next one, say like this, okay, and hit OK. And you see how they're both added there. Well, since we have four of them here, I, I, I know it wouldn't take long to do the four, but let me just show you something. What we can do is we can go up here to add and you see how these all these signs are all going the same way. They're all greater than or equal to. So what we can do for this, we can go ahead and select them and then greater than or equal to and then select all of these and hit OK. And so now it's ready to go. OK. All right, so now all we have to do is hit solve and it'll, it should solve it. And there we go. Keep solver solution, restore original values. We can, we can get reports and stuff like that if we want. Uh, but you know, this right here and we just hit okay. And there it is. So we need what we need one pound of meat and three pounds of cheese. And so this would be your answer. Okay. And you can see how when this got plugged in, you see it, it calculates these. You see that? Okay. See, we've got two times one is two. Three times three is nine. Nine plus two is 11. There it is. See, it's greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to. This is greater than zero. This is greater than zero. And so hopefully this helped. I hope it made sense. Uh, check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.